this is your first time to the channel, welcome. My name is Scott. I am a practicing physician assistant working in endocrinology. I'm also a type 1 diabetic. If you're not subscribed to the channel yet and you're interested in diabetes-related news and tech reviews, please go ahead and subscribe. I'm going to be coming out with new content all of the time. So today I wanted to talk about a few different ways that you can make your existing CGM, whether it's your Dexcom, your Libre, your Medtronic CGM, ways you can make it a little bit more accurate. Now, some of these you may already be familiar with, some of them you may not, but these are proven ways to make your existing sensor more accurate. So the first one I wanted to go over is something called soaking the sensor. So if this is your first time hearing this phrase, let me talk a little bit about what this is and go over why you might wanna do something like this. So when you put on a sensor for the first time, those first 12 to 24 hours, the accuracy is a little bit less than it's gonna be over the next few days. Those first 12 to 24 hours are a little bit shaky. The blood sugar readings or the CGM readings aren't as accurate as they are gonna be on day two, three, and so on. And this isn't just my own observation. This is actually straight from the Dexcom page. And what you can see here is Dexcom basically says, with newly inserted sensors, the differences between your meter value and the G6 reading may be greater. Generally, the match gets closer over the first 24 hours. So you can see this is Dexcom stating it, and Libre says basically the same thing as well. Normally when you first put on a Libre, those first 12 hours or so, they'll generally suggest doing a finger stick because the blood sugar readings are just not as accurate within those 12, first 12 to 24 hours. And I won't go too far into detail about why this happens, but when you insert a new sensor, you have insertion trauma, you have inflammation in the area, and it just basically, until that dies down, those first 12 to 24 hours, the readings just aren't as accurate. So let's talk about soaking the sensor. So what this is, is when you have a sensor that's going to expire in the next 12 to 24 hours, a lot of people go ahead and put on a new sensor. They don't scan that sensor yet, they don't start it, they just let it soak essentially for 12 to 24 hours while they're still using the existing one. And in those 12 to 24 hours, that insertion trauma dies down, things get to normal, and then once this one expires in 12 to 24 hours, this one's already been soaking for that first day or so, and you can go ahead and start this, and you can eliminate those first 12 to 24 hours of those rocky CGM readings. So that's soaking the sensor, and that's one way you can improve your CGM accuracy. The second one is pretty simple, just stay hydrated. So CGMs take their readings from the interstitial fluid. They measure the glucose in the interstitial fluid. And if you're dehydrated, the circulating fluid in the body is going to be decreased, the interstitial fluid will be decreased. And when you're measuring glucose concentration in that area, the glucose is gonna be more concentrated in that interstitial fluid because there will be less fluid. And because of this, sometimes the CGM readings can wind up being higher. And again, this is something Freestyle Libre talks about on their page. It's something that is known. So you wanna make sure when you're wearing a CGM, you're staying properly hydrated. Normally you won't start to see these problems until you're pretty well dehydrated. But I've noticed even sometimes when I'm exercising, I've been sweating a lot, I didn't drink enough fluids. I'll note that so there are some inaccuracies in my CGM compared to a finger stick. So that's an easy way you can make sure your CGM is fairly accurate to stay hydrated. And that's something we should be doing anyways as diabetics, or really as anybody should make sure they're staying hydrated. And this is a way you can keep your sensor to be more accurate. And the third thing I wanted to talk about is changing your sensor location. Now, specifically what I mean by changing your sensor location is not so much that one area will be more accurate than another. Maybe the case in some instances where the Freestyle Libre is more accurate on the arm, Dexam you have some more freedom with where you're putting it. But what I'm really talking about is avoiding something called compression load. Now compression lows is a known phenomenon with both the Dexcom, the Libre. If you look on the Dexcom page, you can see them actually talk about this. And what happens is when you're sleeping at night and you're laying on the side where the sensor is, you're putting pressure on it, it can actually lead to these false hypoglycemic readings on the CGM. So what I personally do is I try to put my sensor in an area where I know I won't be laying on as often or an area where I feel like there won't be as much pressure when I'm laying down on my side. I typically lay down on my sides when I'm sleeping and I normally favor my left side. So that's something I know I'm normally sleeping on my left side. So I try if I can to use my sensor on the right side of my body. You can also take a look and see where you're laying down, you can actually see where your pressure is gonna be, mostly in your hips, your shoulders, and things like that. And you can try to avoid those pressure areas. Sometimes I'll try to put it on my flank in different areas where I feel like if I'm laying on the side, there won't be as much pressure when I'm sleeping. So I try to find areas that won't be as susceptible to these compression lows. A couple of other things that I wanted to talk about, they're not as important as the first few, but certain things that you should try to avoid to um, keep your sensor as accurate as it can possibly be. So if you're on a Dexcom, you can calibrate your Dexcom and I would highly recommend that. So some tips when you're actually calibrating the Dexcom, you wanna make sure this isn't a time when your blood sugars are starting to go rapidly high, rapidly low. You wanna find a time where your blood sugars are fairly stable. That's a good time to calibrate your Dexcom if you're going to do it. 
And then also when you calibrate your Dexcom, you wanna make sure you're getting as accurate of a finger stick as you can. Make sure you really clean the area well to make sure you're getting a really accurate reading to put into your Dexcom. If you're using a Libre, this isn't an option, but if you are using a Dexcom, it's definitely a good way to make sure you're getting a very accurate reading on your Dexcom. Last thing I wanted to talk about is the use of both Tylenol, which is acetaminophen, and some supplements like vitamin C. If you're using a Libre, you wanna be careful with vitamin C. You wanna try not to exceed 500 milligrams a day of vitamin C, also known as exorbic acid. If you're taking more than this and you're using a Freestyle Libre, this can cause some inaccuracies in the CGM reading, so be careful with that. Now with the Dexcom, you wanna be careful with Tylenol, which is also known as acetaminophen, but really the Dexcom G6, this isn't so much of a problem anymore unless you're taking more than the normal dose of Tylenol, which would be a gram every six hours, which is the max dose. You shouldn't be taking any more than that anyways, but if you were, you may have some inaccuracies with the Dexcom. So those are just a couple other pointers to watch out for, but the main thing here, Soak your sensor if you're not doing it. It's a good way to get a better reading, get past that first day of inaccuracy. Make sure you're putting it in a location where you're gonna avoid those compression lows and make sure you're staying hydrated. Those are three quick and easy ways to make sure your CGM is as accurate as it possibly can be. Thank you so much for watching the video. If you have any suggestions for future videos, please let me know in the comments. I would love to hear what you'd like to hear about in the future videos and things like that. And thank you so much again.